Hello and welcome to the history of Babylon 5. Today's episode, Ambassador Kosh. Kosh was present on the Grey Council's cruiser prior to the death of Dukat, and during the Battle of the Line. He had been invited aboard by Dukat, the leader of the Grey Council, and remained hidden to most of the other members, along with his companion, Alcrest. They remained in Dukat's private sanctum, where the Chosen One sought meditation. When the sanctum was moved, Lenan discovered the duo and notified his closest ally to the Council, Delenn, after the outbreak of the earth Membari War. She had already become suspicious of the cargo transfers received in hyperspace, of the atmospheric supplies and questioned Dukat about the existence of beings pretending to be Vorlons. Kosh and Ulcrest displayed a final recording by Dukat that explained how humans would be needed during the inevitable return of the shadows. Kosh and Ulcrest remained on the Membari ship throughout most of the war, even up until the Battle of the Line. Delenn approached them before the battle and explained how the war had taken a life of its own and how she did not know how to stop it. Kosh's only response was the truth points to itself before he and Ulcrest urged her to return to the main council chamber. During the battle, Kosh's words rang in Delenn's ears. She pointed out a random Star Fury and ordered it to be brought to the ship. The pilot of the Star Fury was Jeffrey Sinclair, whom both Kosh and Ulcrest had met in 1260 AD, prior to his transformation into Valen. Kosh arrived unexpectedly early to his posting as the Vorlon Empire's ambassador to Babylon 5 on January 4th, 2257. Upon his arrival, Kosh was poisoned by a mysterious assailant who had used a changeling net to appear to be Commander Jeffrey Sinclair. Kosh was fooled by the net, greeted Sinclair with the internal Enthla Valen, and apparently extended his hand outside his encounter suit. The Vorline Empire insisted that Kosh's encounter suit not be opened, but Dr. Benjamin Kyle opened it anyways and cited Dr. Patient Privilege. Not knowing how the poison entered Kasha's system made the treatment more difficult. Sinclair asked Lita Alexander, a human telepath, to scan Kasha's mind. She received a brief glimpse of when Kasha arrived and that he was poisoned through the hand. Dr. Kyle was able to treat the poison and Kosh recovered. Once recovered, he was welcomed by the other ambassadors and senior staffs during a small reception. When he was seen in public, Kosh wore an encounter suit with a built-in translator, so that someone who talked to him could understand him. Despite his role as an ambassador and having a seat on the Babylon 5 Security Council, Kosh did not partake much in ordinary affairs that came up among the races during his first two years on the station. In 2258, when the Narn attacked the Centauri agricultural colony, Ragish III, Kosh attended the emergency council session at Sinclair's request though he did nothing more than observe. Kosh did caution Sinclair that they are a dying people. We should let them pass. Though Sinclair was confused as to whether he referred to the Narn or the Centauri, when Sinclair asked what he meant, Kosh's only response was, Yes. After the Dilgar war criminal Jadur, the Death Walker, was discovered on the station, the Security Council and the League was called together to vote whether to try her. Kosh once again ignored the request to come to the council meeting. However, once a compromise was reached, as it was discovered that she had an apparent serum for immortality, a Vorlon ship jumped into Babylon 5 space and destroyed the shuttle that carried Jadur. Kosh came to the council meeting to explain, and he simply stated, You are not ready for immortality. When Morden, an agent of the Shadows, first came aboard Babylon 5 to question the major ambassadors on the station, Kosh confronted him during an attack by raiders on the station itself. Kosh definitely told Morden to leave the station immediately. Morden did not comply, and apparently a minor battle erupted between Kosh and one of the shadows that was likely with Morden. Afterwards, Kosh made a request to the station security for equipment to repair his encounter suit, but he credited the damage to the raiders' attack. On December 30th, 2258, Delenn sent her aide Lanier to ask Kosh if the Shadows had indeed returned to Zahadum. Kosh affirmed that they had. That meant that the time for the ancient prophecy that concerned Delenn's transformation was at hand. Having one lingering doubt, Delenn approached Kosh herself and asked him to reveal himself to her. After he complied, all doubt was removed from her. She thanked him and set out to undergo her metamorphosis the following day. 
and we'll be right back after this. In the first days of 2259, Sinclair was replaced by Captain John Sheridan as commanding officer of Babylon 5. Kosh took an apparent notice as he began to regularly attend council meetings. Kosh was present when Shakar attempted to warn the advisory council about their shadows returning to Zahadum. Even though he was fully aware that Shakar was saying the truth, he chose to remain silent as to not alert the shadows to what the younger races knew. Delenn emerged from her chrysalis at the same time, allowing Kosh to be among the first witnesses to her transformation. In June 2259, Turan, the emperor of the Centauri Republic, chose to come to Babylon 5 on a peaceful mission. Though it was his great hope to see a Vorlon, Kosh apparently declined to attend the planned reception for the emperor. However, before he could actually attend the reception, the emperor collapsed from a heart attack. As he lay dying in med lab, Turan stated again to Dr. Franklin how much he wished he could have seen a Vorlon. Almost on cue, Kosh arrives at his bedside. The emperor asks, how will this end? Kosh replied simply and darkly, in fire. Not long after the outbreak of the Narn Centauri War, Sheridan was kidnapped by an alien race known as the Strip. They tortured him through experimentation and forced him to battle other prisoners. Exhausted by the effort, Sheridan passed out in his cell. Kosh reached out, touched his mind via a dream, and explained that was the first time Sheridan's mind was quiet enough for him to hear him. The dream contained strange, pathetic images about future events. Kosh seemed to be alerting him to Susan Ivanova's secret to his upcoming need to rely on Alfred Bester, and that the man in between is searching for you. After Sheridan was rescued and brought back to Babylon 5, Kosh spoke to him briefly enough to confirm that it was much more than a dream. Sheridan came to have a close-up look at Kosh's ship in Bay 13. Kosh overheard him say that he intended to make it his personal mission to learn more about the Vorlons. Kosh decided to contact him first. Sheridan met him in his quarters, and after a cryptic and somewhat heated exchange, Kosh offered to prepare Sheridan to fight legends. He also granted Sheridan a favor and helped him smuggle Everett Jacobs off the station, temporarily in his own ship. Over the next few weeks, Kosh met with Sheridan several times for numerous lessons. One of those lessons came while Sheridan was investigating the murder of a Mimbari. Kosh led Sheridan into the down below and offered him a moment of perfect beauty. Sheridan encountered a strange order of chanting monks and was awed by the experience. He thanked Kosh for the experience before he got back to clearing his name. Kosh approached Delenn a few weeks later when Sheridan had Morden arrested. Sheridan had learned that Morden had been on board the Icarus, along with his wife, Anna Sheridan. Delenn and Kosh went to see Sheridan to ask him to release Morden and did not want Morden to reveal his connection to the Shadows. Sheridan refused unless they provide an explanation. Kosh contested and Delenn explained to Sheridan about the last great Shadow War the first Shadow War, and the return of the Shadows to Zahadum. She also explained that the Vorlons were the last remaining first ones. Kosh himself said that if he left his encounter suit, he would be recognized by everyone. He then showed Sheridan a visual record of the Icarus arriving on Zahadum and the awakening of the Shadows. Sheridan released Morden, then went back to see Kosh privately. He asked Kosh to teach him how to fight and beat the Shadows. He also swore that one day he would go to Zahadum. Kosh agreeing to teach him, but warned, If you go to Zahadum, you will die. Kosh was present at the advisory council when Londo announced the unconditional surrender of the Narn regime, which ended the Narn Centauri War. Afterwards, Kosh was present when Delan and Garibaldi introduced the Rangers to Sheridan. Sheridan promised that Babylon 5 would be where they would hold the line against the Shadows. With events moving towards a showdown with the Shadows, Kosh expressed concern regarding Delenn, whether she was the right person or not for the task ahead. He insisted that she submit to an Inquisitor in a process that could kill her if she was indeed the wrong person. Delenn agreed, survived the process, and was endorsed by the Inquisitor. In early 2260, Lita Alexander arrived on the station via Kosh's ship. After she explained that she had traveled to the Vorlon homeworld, Lita stated that she would be working for Kosh from then on. Lita told the station crew that she did not fear the Psychor, and was confident that Kosh would protect her. 
What Lita did not disclose was that Kosh relied on Lita to carry him from place to place. Or more specifically, she carried part of his consciousness with her from time to time. And we'll be right back after this. Seeking a way to strengthen the Narn resistance, Shakar took an illegal substance, dust, which allowed him to telepathically assault Londo. While inside Londo's mind, Shakar was overwhelmed by the flood of images and feelings. Kosh took advantage of Shakar at his weakness and appeared in his mind as the image of Shakar's father, Jakarn. Kosh spoke to Shakar about what was coming and told him to let go of his hate and anger and pleaded with him not to continue the cycle of blood with the Centauri. He also warned him to prepare for a great sacrifice in days to come. Shakar emerged from the dreamlike phase forever changed, but was unaware that Kosh was the real source of his vision. At the end of July, 2260, the shadows began to attack ships openly, mostly near the rim. Kosh withdrew to the solace of his quarters and did not emerge for at least a week. Sheridan quickly realized how shattered and terrified the minor races were. None of them wanted to commit to a fight that they thought for sure that they would lose. After he realized that they needed a victory to raise morale and pull the alliance together, Sheridan approached Kosh and asked for the Vorlon Empire to engage the shadows at least once and score a victory. Kosh at first flat out refused and told Sheridan, it is not yet time. Enraged, Sheridan pressed Kosh and told him that he would not leave until he agreed to intervene. Kosh in turn became angered and lashed out telekinetically at Sheridan. But when he still insisted, Kosh conceded to his request. Before he went on to relay the request, Kosh warned Sheridan that he would not be able to help him when Sheridan inevitably went to Zaha Doom, and that Sheridan would surely die there. Sheridan mistakenly believed that Kosh spoke out of anger and threatened to withhold help when the time arrived. Kosh, however, knew what was going to happen. A Vorlon Armada won a decisive victory against the Shadow Fleet. That act cemented an alliance among the younger races centered at Babylon 5, and the Army of Light prepared to make a stand against the Shadows, while the rest of the allies celebrated a well-fought victory well into the night. Kosh withdrew to his quarters and waited for what had to come. The Shadows, deeply bitter over the defeat, had Morden break into Kosh's quarters. Once inside, three Shadows attacked Kosh in a violent confrontation. During the fight, Kosh reached out telepathically and communicated to Sheridan via a dream. He appeared as Sheridan's father, David Sheridan, and explained that he knew what had to happen. But after having lived so long, he was afraid of the inevitable. He said goodbye to Sheridan and told him that as long as Sheridan was there, he would be too. The following morning, the station security found the remnants of the attack. No body was found, and only a few fragments of Kosh's encounter suit still remained. The Vorlon Empire was instantly aware of his death. They agreed to a plan to replace Kosh with Ulkrest, the new ambassador assuming Kosh's identity so as not to frighten the minor races with the news of his death. Kosh's ship, which was his personal craft, honored him one last time before it committed suicide by flying into a star. Unknown at this time, Kosh placed part of his consciousness inside Sheridan. When Anna Sheridan arrived on Babylon 5 at the end of the year, Sheridan devised a plan to go back with her to Zaha Doom and hoped to single-handedly end the war. Before Sheridan left, the piece of Kosh within him warned him that if he went to Zaha Doom, he would die. Sheridan dismissed the experience as a memory. Once on the planet, however, he heard Kosh's voice again, that time prompting him to jump into the Great Abyss at the Shadow's capital city. Sheridan leapt into the abyss just as the White Star came crashing down on the city and destroyed it through detonation. Sheridan's fall killed him, but Kosh's presence in his body kept him alive. Deep inside the cavern, Sheridan met Lorien, who was aware of the remnants of Kosh inside him. He restored Sheridan to life, then left the planet with him and formed a plan to end the Second Shadow War once and for all. After he knew that Elcrest would be a liability, as the Vorlons began to destroy entire worlds to clear them of any shadow taint, Sheridan put together a plan to eliminate him. After Sheridan set up a trap to force him to abandon his encounter suit, Elcrest was destroyed by the remnant of Kosh in single combat that also destroyed Elcrest's ship. With that act, Kosh finally and ultimately passed away. 
during the Brakiri Day of the Dead. Kasha's spirit apparently communicated a message to the spirit of Zoe, who appeared to Elizabeth Lockley. Zoe asked Lockley to convey a message to Sheridan, which was, when the long night comes, return to the end of the beginning. When that time came, 20 years later, Sheridan followed Kasha's final instructions and went to Coriana 6 before he died. Thank you for watching the history of Babylon 5. Special thanks to the Babylon Project and all contributors for all information you heard today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can. To those who have, thank you. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.